Okay, we were just talking about the masturbation scene yeah. in this movie, and, and it's hilarious. And and you, th this wasn't originally in the first. Script. In the script I read, I don't. Yeah, it wasn't in there. And then when they first suggested it, I was like, okay, this is actually more intimate than you know, diarrhea is one thing, but yeah. this is taking it to another level. And it was funny because I always think of movies, and I'm always thinking like. When are they going to pee? When are they yeah. going to go to the bathroom? Okay, they're in a cage. How do they do it? Yeah. So I thought it was so brilliant that, for example, the bathroom scene that Kirby Bliss Blanton has was like, yes, finally someone is showing the realness of being a human being stuck in a cage. Mm -hmm. But the masturbation scene just took it to a whole other level. And I think it was hilarious to me because, oh my God, look at the person you followed down to the jungle. Look at what he's actually thinking of and how he's dealing with tension. I mean, it's just like... I, it's just like such a slap in just in my character's face of like, wow, you really, you really screwed you up. You got suckered. <laughs> yes. You got served like completely. Did you ever feel that way about somebody and find yourself on the similar path? So many times. I think what really attracted me, I think, about Justine and the movie itself was this whole line of like, you know, not, I don't think it, I think it happens at every age that you get yeah. so like caught up in a moment or caught up in an idea and you go and you go, even with love, you know, you fall for someone really fast and she kind of falls for Ariel and uh, for the cause without kind of guarding herself or, or, or looking at everything. And then you get your butt handed to yourself because you're like, oh my God, I should have maybe thought this through. I shouldn't have jumped into conclusions or jumped into something so fast. I think I personally do that a lot. I'm a very impulsive person and Justine kind of is in that way too. So that really attracts me and I was like, oh my God, this is real. This happens to all of us. And I thought that was a really cool aspect of it. Well, I'm, I'm also looking at this. It's such an emotional journey for this Completely. character. Oh my God. How yeah. did you deal with that? And was there a lot of humor to kind of at least offset? When I read the script, I kind of knew it was going to be this like horror movie and I came yeah. in with that prejudgment. But what fascinated me about it and what kind of like made me say, I need to do this was, was the arc of my character. I think Justine starts as a very naive, dreamlike, a little bit innocent still, you know, when you're coming of age, like very much in love with the idea of helping the world and then sort of through the movie learns and becomes a warrior. And I think that's such a strong, potent message of like a human being sort of going through the, literally the ringer and in the jungle through the worst thing ever to kind of learn and come back to her home and her safe place with a huge lesson. I think it also reflects in the coming of age situation. And thank God I had an awesome crew and an amazing cast that offset. And even during yeah. takes, like we could just like look at each other and go, we're in this stuff together. Cause we were literally in actual pork um, how do you say without cursing feces? <laughs> like, oh, you can curse on Joe oh, Love. So, oh yeah. my God, fuck yes, shit, awesome. Um, <laughs> so we were literally sitting on shit all day. And so we're thinking in between six, holy fuck, am I really here? And it's like, oh yeah, and we're all covered in it too. So that was honestly a blessing because you're right, the whole arc of uh, Justine is it's grueling. Like she goes through so much and it doesn't stop. And I think life many times is like that. Have you noticed like mm -hmm. when all this shit just comes together, at least for a woman, like it's like it all happens together. And I think had I not had that crew down there in the jungle and the cast to like support each other, it was like kind of like a summer camp situation. I've never gone to summer camp, but this is my new <laughs> idea of summer camp. Sounds spending, like a pretty cool one. <laughs> spending a month in the grueling, relentless, unforgiving jungle. Um, it was a blast. It truly was. Being covered in shit all day is the best. <laughs> and you also worked with that 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 tribe. I mean, yeah. that, that's, oh, got, that was that's unforgettable. Aspect. I mean, how can you, what did you bring from that? Ah, so much. I mean, honestly, I've been talking about this movie for three years. You think I'd get sick of it by now. I mean, yeah. just, let's get over it. And I can't. I, I, it doesn't cease to amaze me how memories now could become more and more clear. As time goes by, I remember things more clearly. And working with the tribe was honestly the most amazing experience I've had yet ever in my life. I, I kind of had a parallel with my character. You know, she's completely stripped from everything and has to go into the jungle sort of alone with no family support, no one that she knows, and just jump into this. And as Lorenza, um, the whole cast where we were staying at, it was so far isolated from the real world that we didn't have any connection to the internet, much less electricity. And so you were kind of forced to be there and whatever that meant. And getting just to the location was a three hour ride. We would get in a, in a truck for an hour and a half and then two hours in a boat from this Amazonian lake. And it's this beautiful avatar green type world. Like you're like, holy shit, what's happening? And then you get to this beautiful little like village and there's straw huts and you're like, oh my God. And I, me, ignorant self, I was thinking, oh, we're going to the jungle. I'm gonna see some monkeys and giraffes and some weird shit. And no, there was actually, you know, they live off of farming. So there were wild cows, wild horses and hens all over. 
And it was awesome. I got to really, you know, communicate with these people and what they did and what their family values were and how they survived and what it meant to actually get food. And when the rainy season came, it was honestly fascinating. And I was lucky because I speak Spanish. So we would get there so early at the same time as the camera that we had three hours before makeup and hair even started. So those hours I would take to like play with the kids, play soccer, sort of get kind of what they knew about the world and what they didn't. Like it was interesting. They didn't have any Diet Coke or Coca-Cola or any sort of soft drink yet they knew who Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber was. Oh my God. So there was a definite one to connect with society, but they only had one boat. It's a tribe of 300 people, and they only had one boat that would take them to like the closest town, and that would be like once a month. So they were very far disconnected to what was going on, and that for me was a huge lesson. I all of a sudden wasn't addicted to my phone, and it was all about being connected. And like right now, like talking and you know having a conversation, it was so refreshing. I came back with like a weight like just taken off of me, realizing, oh my God, there is really no need for all these egotistical social media world, which is tough to not be connected to in the industry we're in. But I think that was honestly the best thing ever. And if there was another opportunity to go down there and you know see how they are and what's going on, I would like go in a second.